Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be at least making a start on a quick review or discussion or whatever you want to call it of Crow by Ted Hughes from The Life and Songs of the Crow. Um, it actually doesn't have a blurb, but it does have a little intro, which I'm going to just read out to you. Uh, it's very short. Uh, so this new edition of Crow contains seven new poems which did not appear in the original edition. They are Crow Hears Fate Knock on the Door, Crow's Fall, The Contender, Crow Tries the Media, Crow's Elephant Totem Song, Crow Colour, and Crow Paints Himself into a Chinese Mural, which I haven't got to yet, so it may or may not be racist, but hopefully not. Um, with poetry collections, what I find is best is just to read out the poems. So I've been tabbing as I go, and I'm just going to read out some poems and then share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Lineage, uh, and I think this is the first one as well, and I just thought it was a oh, yeah, it is the first one, I thought it was a really good uh, introduction. In fact, that both of these first two poems, the next one is Examination at the Womb Door, and I really like both of them, so I'm gonna read both of them out. So, Lineage. In the beginning was Scream, who begat blood, who begat eye, who begat fear, who begat wing, who begat bone, who begat granite, who begat violet, who begat guitar, who begat sweat, who begat Adam, who begat Mary, who begat God, who begat nothing, who begat never, 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 who begat crow, screaming for blood, grubs, crusts, anything, trembling featherless elbows in the nest's filth. And then we have examination at the womb door. Who owns these scrawny little feet? Death. Who owns this bristly scorched looking face? Death. Who owns these still working lungs? Death. Who owns this utility coat of muscles? Death. Who owns these unspeakable guts? Death. Who owns these questionable brains? Death. All this messy blood? Death. These minimum efficiency eyes? Death. This wicked little tongue? Death. This occasional wakefulness? Death. Given, stolen, or held pending trial. Held. Who owns the whole rainy, stony earth? Death. Who owns all of space? Death. Who is stronger than hope? Death. Who is stronger than the will? Death. Stronger than love? Death. Stronger than life? Death. But who is stronger than death? Me, evidently. Pass, crow. And here we have Crow alights. Crow saw the herded mountains steaming in the morning, and he saw the sea, dark-spined with the whole earth in its coils. He saw the stars fuming away into the black mushrooms of the nothing forest, clouding their spores, the virus of God. And he shivered with the horror of creation. In the hallucination of the horror, he saw this shoe with no soul, rain-sodden, lying on a moor. And there was this garbage can, bottom rusted away, a playing place for the wind in a waste of puddles. There was this coat in the dark cupboard, in the silent room, in the silent house. There was this face smoking its cigarette between the dusk window and the fire's embers. Near the face, this hand, motionless. Near the hand, this cup. Crow blinked. He blinked. Nothing faded. He stared at the evidence. Nothing escaped him. Nothing could escape. This is the Battle of Osfrontalis. Words came with life insurance policies. Crow feigned dead. Words came with warrants to conscript him. Crow feigned mad. Words came with blank checks. He drew mini mice on them. Words came with Aladdin's lamp. He sold it and bought a pie. Words came in the likeness of vaginas in a row. He called in his friends. Words came in the likeness of a wreathed vagina pouring out handle. He gave it to the museum. Words came with barrels of wine. He let them go sour and pickled his onions. Crow whistled. Words attacked him with a glottal bomb. He wasn't listening. Words surrounded and overran him with light aspirates. He was dozing. Words infiltrated gorilla labials. Crow slapped his beak, scratched it. Words swamped him with continental masses. Crow took a sip of water and thanked heaven. Words retreated, suddenly afraid, into the skull of a dead jester, taking the whole world with them. But the world did not notice. And the crow, and crow yawned. Long ago he had picked that skull empty. And here we have Crow's battle fury. 
When the patient, shining with pain, suddenly pales, Crow makes a noise suspiciously like laughter. Seeing the night city on the earth's blue bulge, trembling its tambourine, he bellows laughter till the tears come. Remembering the painted masks and the looming of the balloons, of the pinprick dead, he rolls on the ground helpless. And he sees his remote feet and he chokes, he holds his aching sides, he can hardly bear it. One of his eyes sinks into his skull, tiny as a pin. One opens, a gaping dish of pupils. His temple veins gnarl, each like the pulsing head of a month-old baby. His heels double to the front. His lips lift off his cheekbone. His heart and his liver fly in his throat. Blood blasts from the crown of his head in a column. Such as cannot be in this world. A hair's breadth out of the world. With his glared off face glued back into position. A dead man's eyes plugged back into his sockets. A dead man's heart screwed in under his ribs. His tattered guts stitched back into position. His shattered brains covered with a steel cowl. He comes forward a step and a step and a step. This is Crow's song of himself. When God hammered Crow, he made gold. When God roasted Crow in the sun, he made diamond. When God crushed Crow under weights, he made alcohol. When God tore Crow to pieces, he made money. When God blew Crow up, he made day. When God hung Crow on a tree, he made fruit. When God, when God buried Crow in the earth, he made man. When God tried to chop Crow in two, he made woman. When God said, you win Crow, he made the Redeemer. When God went off in despair, Crow stropped his beak and started in on the two thieves. And the last one, and this is quite a long one as well, with an excellent title. Song for a Phallus. There was a boy was Oedipus, stuck in his mama's belly. His daddy walled the exit up, he was a horrible fella. Mama, mama. You stay in there, his daddy cried, because a dicky bird has told the world when you get born, you'll treat me like a turd. Mama, mama. His mammy swelled and wept and swelled with a bang he busted out. His daddy stropped his hacker when he heard that baby shout. Mama, mama. Oh, do not chop his winkle off, his mammy cried with horror. Think of the joy will come of it tomorrow and tomorrow. Mama, mama. But, God he had, but daddy had the word from God. He took that howling brat. He tied its legs in crooked knots and threw it to the cat. Mama, mama. But Oedipus, he had the luck for when he hit the ground. He bounced up like a jack in a box and knocked his daddy down. Mama, mama. He hit his daddy such a whack. Stone dead his daddy fell. His cry went straight to God above. His ghost it went to hell. Mama, mama. The dicky bird came to Oedipus, you murderous little sod. The sphinx will bite your bollocks off, this order comes from God. Mama, mama. The sphinx, she waved her legs at him and opened wide her maw. Oedipus stood stiff and wept at the dreadful thing he saw. Mama, mama. He stood there on his crooked leg, the sphinx began to bawl. Four legs, three legs, two legs, one leg, who goes on them all? Mama, mama. Oedipus took an eye. Oedipus took an axe. Oh, hello, Jesus. Oedipus took an axe and split the sphinx from top to bottom. The answers aren't in me, he cried. Maybe your guts have got them. Mama, mama. And out there came ten thousand ghosts all in their rotten bodies, crying, you will never know what a cruel bastard God is. Mama, mama. Next came out his daddy dead and shrieked about the place. He stabs his mammy in the guts and smiles into her face. Mama, mama. Then out his mammy came herself, the blood poured from her bucket. What you can't understand, she cried, you sleep on it or sing to it. Mama, mama. <laughs> Oedipus raised his axe again, the world is dark, he cried. The world is dark one inch ahead, what's on the other side? Mama, mama. He split his mammy like a melon, he was drenched with gore. He found himself curled up inside as if he had never been bore. Mama, mama. So yeah, weird little book, pretty quirky. I did enjoy it. Um, I would probably actually give it a 4 out of 5, which surprises me because I'm not really a Ted Hughes fan. I mean, when I think about Ted Hughes, I think about Sylvia Plath putting her head in the oven, you know? So, I don't know, I find it hard to like him, but I did like the poetry here. So I guess, you know, separating the art from the artist and all that. So yeah. Four out of five, would probably recommend if you've enjoyed the poems I read. I mean, what more is there to say? So there we have it, that's what I made of Crow by Ted Hughes. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, uh, yeah. <laughs> let me know in the comments which of these poems you enjoyed the most, I guess. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Mama, mama.